What if you showed up to a marathon, but you thought you were gonna take a leisurely stroll in the park, such as this? I just went on a run, that's why I'm sweating, but what if you showed up to a marathon, but what you thought you were gonna do was walk around the park all leisurely for, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes, something like that, a nice leisurely stroll in the park, but what you actually showed up for was a marathon. You would be freaked out. You would be like, what is going on? This is terrible, I can't do it. Who did this to me? Why me? Cry me a river. Listen, that's what life is for I think so much of, so many of us. We're showing up for a leisurely stroll, but what we're actually doing is running an ultra marathon. And so half of our turmoil, more than half, is just wrongful expectations. We're expecting a leisurely stroll in the park, easy going, maybe do a little jog, and yet we're in an ultra marathon. I wrote something about this, the fact that life is a challenge, and when we know it's a challenge, when we expect the challenge, it becomes so much easier to deal with the challenge. Expectations are half the problem. Here's what I wrote this morning. Life's challenges are invitations to presence. Also, our challenges are an invite from God to get with him and be like, yo, I need you. I can't do this on my own. So it's like the minute of challenge reveals itself to us, which for me is the first thing in the morning. The challenges descend on my fractured mind. And so that's like an invitation for God at that point. Before every challenge, a fork in the road appears. One path is escape, the other is presence. We resist challenges, but life is basically a challenge machine, a challenge factory, which honors us with an invitation to co-create our existence with God. One, one path is escape, we can just distract ourselves, and the other one is an invite into observing our thoughts and becoming present. Oh, also, I think that's why the Bible says seek first the kingdom because if we decide first thing in the morning what side of that equation we're gonna land on, it, it, it uh, resonates for the rest of our whole day. When we perceive our backs to be up against the wall or when things seem to spin out of our control, we either obliterate or expand our consciousness under the perceived weight or threat of the situation. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, become present first thing, and have our silence be like a phone call to God to ask for assistance. Basically, it's like the gurus meditate. Christ said, pray ceaselessly, seek first the kingdom. You can perceive these things as the same thing. If we're to pray ceaselessly, that means being present and observing our thoughts in my view. And just to become in the here and the now, understanding life is a challenge and it's okay. It's okay that this is really challenging, that this is really difficult. This act determines the operating system our day will run on. There are only two I could think of, presence and surrender, where we observe our thoughts and move with the knowledge that we are in the world, but not of the world. That's the other thing. When we are the witness, it says, uh, again, Christ says to be in the world, not of the world. I believe it says that somewhere in the Bible or something like that. I'm not a Bible expert, but to be in the world, not of the world. There again is this call for detachment. In Buddhism, it's detached. Uh, life is suffering and non-attachment. I think there's something similar in Christianity when you, when you say to be in the world and not of the world. When we're observing, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. When we are in our thoughts, when we perceive ourselves to be these little humans having all these issues and we're just like listening to our chattering mind as the alpha and the omega, then we are of the world and we're in a world of trouble. And the other is mental chatter and cheap escape where we perceive ourselves to be our busy mind on the hunt for distraction and dopamine spike. We're on the hunt for distraction and dopamine spikes when we're running on the operating system of our thought forms where we are not only in the world but of it as well. The advantage of operating as the witness rather than the one 
that everything is happening to is rather large to know that for as long as we are alive the challenge of living will never subside therefore to be the witness is the only way to ride rather than the mind looking for a place to hide the bible tells us that we are to seek first the father that we don't have to do this on our own and that we in fact aren't alone here so therefore too faith we're not here alone all these challenges like this is what i like about christianity because i like to know there's god with me helping oh, i don't i don't know the buddhism thing if there is just like you and detachment i don't know i could be wrong about that don't don't hate me buddhist i just don't know much about it but I like the God thing because I do believe it, for one. And for two, it's also just like, we're not here on our own. We have a helping hand. To flick the switch in our perception that we are meant to be challenged here is massive because from there we empower ourselves to not be broken by the expectations that life shouldn't be a challenge. When we know it's a challenge, we don't, we're, we're not bummed out. When we show up and are running the marathon, we've trained for the marathon, we're gonna have a better time running the marathon than if we show up thinking we're gonna take a leisurely park in the stroll and suddenly we're trying to be David Goggins out here. Hallelujah, oh, oh uh, let's see. Because from there we empower ourselves to not be broken by the expectations that life shouldn't be a challenge. Of course it is and of course it should be. Hallelujah, it's an invitation to be here now, to land in presence, to the witness of your avatar moving through whatever stations there are, the deeper the challenge, the more urgent the invitation to seek the Father, to seek present. To me, it's all a setup. There's more, I'm right, oh, it's almost done. It's all a setup to get with God, basically, in my view, that's what I think. Without, uh, to seek presence, to actually land in this moment without missing it. The fleeting nature of life and love. Every moment, a gift wrapped in a challenge. The gift impossible to open without the light of the Holy Spirit. Running from life, we scatter our gifts along the path unopened. We don't ever land in the moment if we're running all the time, if we're not embracing the here and the now and the challenge of life. Running to life, we become the gift opening itself in the light. There you have it. Whoa, holy moly. Oh, whoa. And then, once we accept all that, that life's a challenge and all that, it actually becomes quite fun. Yes. Whoa. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know how you do with the challenges, deal with the challenges of this life. Keep rocking. I love you. Peace.